the bee population is dying. Researchers have created the first global map of the species in order to save them. And you're looking at that map. The darker the region, the more species of bees. Take a look at that bee right there. That's fantastic. We're going to look at that in just a second. Researchers have taken an important first step towards bee conservation by creating the first modern map of bee species represented globally. Now, did you guys know that more than 20,000 species of bees exist? That's amazing. And this is throughout the world. And they have been dying over the last two decades. And that's thanks to pesticide poisoning and plant loss or habitat loss. You notice how I left out that other word there because it is not because of that and I'm going to prove it to you quickly now real quick let's take a look at this bee species beautiful peacock bee with the gigantic look at that eye fantastic this just one of the 20,000 species worldwide probably an, a, a tropical bee now, most of the bees in the world live in very specialized areas. This dark region in the U.S., this dark region in South America, and this dark region through Europe, and this dark region through Australia and South Africa all fall in the same longitude and latitude in the north and in the south. So in the northern hemisphere, the majority of bees exist between 35 degrees north and 45 degrees north latitude in the south and that's this dark area here and this whole dark region across Asia and Europe and then after we pass the equator the majority of bees in the southern hemisphere live where do you think yeah 35 to 45 degrees south latitude which includes the southern tip of Africa and the south of Australia New Zealand has a lot of bees. So those are just some interesting bee facts that you now know. And bees are fascinating. They are beyond reproach. They're amazing. In fact, bees use our Earth's magnetic field to locate themselves. In fact, they have these iron granules in their abdomen that make that possible. And not only that, they use electrostatic force to collect the pollen. It is a form of electrostatic attraction that deposits the pollen on their legs. They're just noodling through it and it gets sucked down and put on their legs and stuck there using a magnet. Did you know that? Not only that, they're using a type of magnetic locating to move around in, in their area. Now, magnetic sensing through the abdomen of the honeybee has been studied and proven. And here is a paper published in 2016, which will bring you up to speed on that. And real quick, we'll dive into the abstract here, lightly. Honeybees have the ability to detect the Earth's magnetic field. And the suspected magnetoreceptors are the iron granules in the abdomen of the bee. Fascinating. To identify the sensing root of the honeybee, magnetoreceptors, this paper conducted a classical conditioning experiment in which the responses of the proboscis extension reflex were monitored. Well, we're not going to get into that, but that's just some fascinating shit about bees. Another fascinating fact is that ELF, or extremely low frequency electromagnetic fields, can impair the cognitive and motor abilities of honeybees. Say what? And this is bad for honeybees, especially around modern cities, because a lot of ELF is pumping around right into your brain. That's why I wear the 5G hat. And you can see an example of that. Copper mesh and other proprietary blend in there blocking those waves. ELF from entering my noggin. 
So extremely low frequency electromagnetic field or ELF, EMF pollution from overhead power lines is known to cause biological effects across many phyla. Those are groups of animals or insects, etc. But the effects are poorly understood, which is why we need to do more study on that. But the major cause of all the bee declines over the last decade or so, by far, is colony collapse disorder. And here is a paper, a descriptive study done back in 2009 at the peak of the colony collapse disorder. And this was a cocktail of all these extremely dangerous pesticides that were being quickly uh, approved by the FDA and EPA and other sources that were killing bees and other insects in mass. And about a decade ago, dozens of papers came out on the topic of the mass extinction of insects. They blamed it on climate change and you and CO2, but they couldn't be further from the truth. It is a dangerous cocktail of multinational corporation chemicals being approved inappropriately at the highest level of government that is killing our native insects and our bees, period. And once you weaken these colonies, other types of things like varroa mites and other diseases like Nosema can come in and to completely decimate bee populations. It's the multinational corporations that are doing this. It's not you. But a lot of you have fought back since then. I helped start the March Against Monsanto where bees were our number one cause. Well, and the food you eat because it's food for sheep, but the bees were the main purpose because without bees, we lose many of the food crops we need to survive on this planet. Now, because of the outreach from the human population worldwide in many countries, focused in Germany and other European countries, really driving the force against Syngenta and Monsanto, Diamond in the US, etc. We really crushed these corporations and got some laws to change in many areas. Also, many states in the U.S. have banned pesticides of the most dangerous kind that affect bees, including, but not limited to, the neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids are the number one destroyer of bees. They just make them, well, they, they don't make them well. So ban, banning neonicotinoids is very important. So just some background on colony collapse disorder. Because of the banning of neonicotinoids uh, after 2010, 2011, 2012, all the way up to 2016, bee colonies have recovered and the col colony collapse disorder is reducing significantly. So there is success in activism. Trust me, I wouldn't be doing it if there wasn't. There is a moral responsibility for each and every one of you to help save the bees because multinational corporations are doing everything in their power to eliminate them, not on purpose, but just to improve their bottom dollar. Now, to learn more about colony losses, managed colony population decline, and the colony collapse disorder, a nice three-page paper here in 2009 I will leave you links to. And then, directly from the EPA, colony collapse disorder and the recovery of the bee populations all the way up through 2016 here. It's getting better, folks. But if you want to help save bees, and especially bumblebees, because of a lot of our viewers are claiming they haven't even seen a bumblebee in years, there are certain flowers that you can plant in your yard to attract them and bring them back once again. And our permaculture orchard here is filled with a number of species of bumblebees. And it is quite fantastic to go out there and spend time with all the species of bees. We're in one of the darkest regions um, right here on the map in the Four Corners region. We have some of the most, there's hundreds of species of bees here. That's all I can say. So I will leave you links to this article on plants and flowers that you could put in your yard to attract bumblebees. Also coming from the Bee Conservancy, 10 ways to save the bees. Plant a bee garden. That's the first thing I linked you to back there. But there are many other sources where you can find free information on what to plant in a bee garden. Hey, start with something called bee balm. It's native to our region. Some people call it bergamot. Earl Grey much? So not only are these plants beneficial to bees, they're beneficial to you. Who knew? 
Go chemical free. Do not spay any, spray any pesticides or chemicals in your property. It's unnecessary and embarrassing. There are many natural remedies for pests and bugs and, uh, and f fungus and a whole cacophony of things being used in the permaculture world and organic farmers. And if you just search the internet, you're going to find many resources to help you get through there. Become a citizen scientist. Learn before you act. Watch the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Some of the best citizen scientists are listening to me right now. Provide trees for bees. Did you know that the nectar from flowering trees provides bees with almost 70% of their diet? Yeah, most people didn't know that. Now you know. Create a bee bath. This is a shallow dish like a bird bath that's filled with rocks that bees can land on so they don't drown. Just call it a bird bath with rocks because that's what it is. Build homes for native bees. You can even buy them for 10 and 20 bucks at Tractor Supply or other stores that have that kind of stuff. It's ca they're called native bee houses. You can order them on, on Amazon. I'm sure I got them in the store. How about raising your own bees? Who would ever thought of that? And on and on. There are many ways to save bees. If you're bee crazy, and it is the holidays, you can buy this awesome book or download the PDF for free online. 50 ways to save the bees and change the world. That sounds awesome, because bees are awesome. They feed us, and they do more than that. They're responsible for proliferating plants and trees across the earth. Without bees, we would be lost, which is why we need to save the bees. One bee at a time, one species at a time. We can do it. I hope you got something out of the video. Bees are knowledge, and that's a boom. Be safe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and plant a bee garden. Learn about bees and consider maybe even raising your own bees, which equals free honey. And that's like free money. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the boxes illuminating around the square to gain more of it. Thank you for watching.